The reason why ultra high density grazing is the worst idea in the world and why ultra high density grazing is actually going to infest your animals with parasites is because if you see all this grass, it's where cows had pooped. Do you want a cow eating poop? I don't think so. Over here, we got more poopies. Look, cow poopies. You want the cows eating that grass? I don't think so. Now I will say it's really not as bad. Uh, over here there was lots of patches. So my ground is a little more patchy uh, in the grass department, I should say, than maybe some others would be. Um, and I think it's just because I have bunch grass species, which that's what they do, they bunch together. So it takes a little bit longer, like in this specific area, it takes a little bit longer for them to kind of go and fill in. Um, but everything I see here has all been pooped on. Like, look, there's a little poopy there. There's some poopy there. See some poop, see some poop. So you may ask, well, why are you okay with leaving all this grass? You know, the ultra high density guys say that what I'm doing is encouraging species selection. I'm going to burn out all the desirables and encourage the undesirables. And no, I'm not talking about the teenage kid trying to date your daughter either. I'm talking about all these grass species. Well, here's the problem. How do I know what's desirable? That's what I think is desirable. But is that what the animal wants? Is that what the animal needs? You know, we have discussions on occasion here, folks, where, uh, as you see here, this is very barren. And you can literally turn over here and it's crazy. We have a lot of discussions on here about some of that kind of stuff. Well, if an animal just eats the clover out of your field, does that mean it's desired? Well, yeah, they want it. But that don't mean they should have it. That don't mean that they need it. That just means that they want it. So again, is that something that they need? Is that something that they have to have to survive? Not really. Clover is a great source of protein and they definitely need protein. I won't argue that one. But every year I got clover that comes up and every year they go to town on it and every year it comes back. So must not be doing something wrong. But I actually like the fact that we're leaving stuff. So the issue I have with ultra high density grazing and they do it in the desert, which boggles my mind. So from an analytical standpoint, eating all of this stuff down to the dirt, because that's basically what ultra high density grazers want. They want to eat it all down to the dirt. Doesn't make any sense because it uses more water, right? What uses more water? Getting a plant from that all the way up to um, hay field height or starting a piece of grass that's down here all the way up to hay field height. What uses more water, folks? Okay. So you left this bare dirt. What's going to happen in the heat of the summer? It's going to dry that out, right? So you're going to use more water just to even start growing something in this little patch. Okay. So again, it doesn't make any sense, but yet these people love it. These people do it. They say they get better growth that way. You know, I think what it is is because they let their ground go fallow for a year. Lots of farmers out in Montana will let their, some of their ground go fallow for a year because what it does is it allows water to be held in the soils. Now they do spray with chemicals, so you know that's not necessarily the best thing in the world to keep the weeds at bay. But they go fallow so that they can hold moisture in the soil so they have a better crop the next year. So is that what these grazers are doing? Are they basically allowing this ground to go fallow for a year, whether it's unusable for a year? so that that way they can have a better return the next year. Hey, knock it off. I don't love you, you were adopted. So again, folks, you have to look at the totality when you're considering these different things. For me, that would never work and I'll tell you why. Multiflora rose, autumn olive, black locust or honey locust or any locust in reality, um, and any other non-native invasive species. So for some of you that may be kudzu, uh, for some of you, that may be like, oh, there was a tree, I think. Well, I know a Lanthus tree of heaven is one, but there was a tree that people were really wanting to plant and it, it took off and I forget what it was. Um, but, you know, it's like stuff like that, where in my area, I can't do that because it is in the soils and with proper management, they stay at bay without having to do anything crazy like um, cutting or spraying or anything like that. But if you let it go fallow, those are first succession plant species, which means they grow first. 
a little sciency on you there. So again, folks, it's it's that whole deal for me that's like when you sit down and use logic, it doesn't make sense. You're going to use more grass, or you're, sorry, you're going to use more water growing this grass here than you're going to to grow this grass into a fully height, fully matured, full height plant species. So again, it doesn't make any sense why ultra high densities love it. But again, if you don't have the water, once it's tall enough, it holds water better. So then you would say, well, why don't you do the take a third, leave two thirds method, right? Like to me, again, this would be the most ideal because look at all this grass that's going to hold moisture in this soil down here. That's going to keep water in your soil so this can grow better. Wouldn't that be the most ideal? Well, they say then the grasses just burn out. Okay, then how do your grasses grow anyways then? If those grasses are gonna burn out, how do the grasses grow when you leave it go for an entire year? Because at some point they'll get that height. And at some point you're gonna have a grass that's that height in the middle of summer getting burnt out. It just doesn't logically make sense, folks. I'm not saying it doesn't work. I'm not saying that you can't use it. I'm just saying it doesn't logically make sense for my environment, for what I'm seeing with the soil and what I know to be true with the soil. Again, my issues in the summertime are low rain, high heat. So I wanna leave as much soil armor as some may call it as possible. And also to add the folks that say as soon as plants go to stem, they're garbage. I'd like to say that that's false because a lot of this went to stem already. And a lot of folks would tell me that I need to graze that before it even gets to stem. But again, folks, not a hypocrite. I like what I do because it works for my ground and in my area. I get different waters than you do. I got different soil types and textures and fertility than you do. And I know that to be true even across a road ditch because one side of the road ditch may have been reclaimed quarry ground or coal mine ground or strip mine ground. And the other side could be native native grass is native pastures thank you guys so much for watching we'll see you on the next one won't we river are you gonna come say hi yeah no not interested no okay <laughs>